Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for the third Sunday of Easter for April the 18th. It's rather a dull and uh, dreary day outside uh, while I'm recording this and uh, we've had uh, a lot of rain this week and uh, much needed as uh, we, we predict for a hot summer. But uh, good to be with you this morning in the midst of this, uh, this lockdown and I do pray that you're keeping well. We use the opening sentences for the service of morning prayer for Easter. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, open to us the scriptures. Make our hearts burn within us while you speak. We say the Venite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he has made it, and his hands have molded dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 4. Answer when I call, O God my right. You give me room when I am in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifice and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, O oh, that we might see some good, let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their, when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. first reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts and reading from chapter 3, verse 12 to 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you, honor at this, uh, why do you wonder at this, and why do you stare at us, as though by your own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of the Pilate, 
though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have the murdered one given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him his, this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John, chapter 3, and verse 1 to 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is not what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed, but what we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for he, we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves, just as He is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he has reve was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for this morning is taken from Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 36 to 48. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do, you, do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed him his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were, dis, they, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it, in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to pro pro proclaim in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things, the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We needed that cockerel on uh, Good Friday, and we'd gone off three times in a row. Well done, cockerel. <laughs> we need to take care not to make the Christian faith so human or anthropocentric that we fail to realize that God's loving relationship extends to all that God has created and that we are called to love all that God loves. As I remarked on Wednesday, the love of God expressed in the incarnation, passion and resurrection of Christ is extended to all the world, the cosmos, all created order, that all things may be reconciled in Christ. In Genesis 1, we are repeatedly reminded that everything that God has created is good. That it is created with and for love and set apart for God's intended purpose, i.e. it is holy. And it is in that context that we have the intention of God in creating humans. And let them, humans, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, 
and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is open upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and, so, and it was so. To have dominion over something means to be entrusted with it f f by another for its own care. In other words, it is to love it, to care for it, to steward it in a way that reflects the amount of love and devotion as the one who entrusted it to us. It is in this sense that we are the stewards or custodians of creation. That God has entrusted us to care for it with the same set of value that God has placed upon it. As something good that needs to be loved and treated as God's own. Wendell Berry, the author, put it this way. The ecological teaching of the Bible is simply inescapable. God made the world because he wanted it made. He thinks that the world is good and he loves it. It is his world. He has never relinquished title to it. And he has never evoked the conditions bearing on his gift to us of the use of it. That obliges us to take excellent care of it. God loves the world, then how might any person of faith be excused, excused for not loving it or justified in destroying it. That word repentance that we have set in all the readings for today, metanoia, means to turn around or to redirect. It contains within it that sense of making a correction of direction through the will. In Acts 3, Peter, in addressing the crowd, says to them, repent therefore and turn to God as a sign of their recognition of the healing, restoring work of God in another. It is a call to shift their point of view and focus. The problem with that turning is the recognition that the direction we are going is wrong. And that is a tough bit for most of us. While many of us might get the emotional appeal of saving whales or looking after cuddly pandas, we might struggle to recognize that when we consume for the sake of consumption's sake, that this is wrong. It is a sin. We might struggle to recognize that when we toss a cigarette butt out the window or toss our toxic waste in the trash or leave the lights burning when we're not in the room or consume phantom power through our appliances, that this might be a sin, an unloving act to that which God loves. The added difficulty is that many of these issues fall into those grey areas of ethics where we feel bogged down by the complexity of detail or where it seems so profoundly removed from us. But what is the intention of repentance? The intention of repentance is always to bring us back into a relationship with God, ourselves and our neighbours and all that God has entrusted us with. The question might be, how does this action impact the relationship that I have with this being or this thing? For example, is my relationship with this being or this thing that one of consuming and is defined no longer by love and care, but defined by some unhealthy understanding that treated this thing or this being as simply an object for my own consumption? Is my consumption a piece of chicken or meat defined by my lack of concern for its own welfare or its own care? Is my consumption of electricity defined by an uncaring or unloving relationship to those things that are damaged because of my consumption? As we look towards Earth Day this week, we might be reminded that we need to live in right relationship or reconciled existence to all that God has made and entrusted us with and where we recognize ourselves as not being in right relationship or reconciled existence with someone or something, that we exercise our will to reorientate ourselves, to repent, and to face in a different direction. Pray God that this Easter we might learn to be good stewards of all that God has created in order that we may live a resurrected life together. Amen. And this morning we affirm our faith together in the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our intercessions today, we are going to pray for our world. And we're going to pray for those things that impact our world and the environment in which we live in. We're going to start with a confession. Let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. We confess our sin and the sins of our society in the misuse of God's creation. God our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our pre prayer and in your mercy forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of harvest but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there was no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Let us pray to God that God will bring to fruition all that God desires for God's creation. You have created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in making us stewards of the earth. We pray for your world that we may share and conserve its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. Divine spark and creator, in your mercy, hear us. You have given humans a rich land, a land of streams and rivers, wheat and barley, vines and oil and honey. We have made by sin a world of suffering and sorrow. We pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. Divine communion and sustainer, in your mercy, hear us. In Christ you call us to a new way of life, loving our neighbour before ourselves. Help us to treat with care and respect the world as it is, as we live in hope and anticipation of the world as it will be when your kingdom comes and your will is done. Thank you for those living and departed who have shown a true respect for your creation. Help us to follow in their footsteps until with them we see you face to face, where all is made new in Christ our Lord. God of grace and mercy, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray our colleague uh, for this third, third Sunday of Easter. O oh God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work who is live and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest with you now and forevermore. Amen. I'm going to go out this morning and just uh, go and video a couple of things, including uh, the daffodils that have come up. And uh, we're just seeing the buds forming on the apple blossoms at the moment. Um, it's still a little dull and dreary. Um, it's that uh, sort of stage in, in spring uh, where we have a lot of rain. But nonetheless, it's still beautiful. And uh, so please come and join me um, for a little bit of a, a view of the farm um, in this early spring. Amen. Song throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole.